The world of Formula One is a global phenomenon, with a sport traveling to 20 countries across five continents within a span of nine months. The level of logistical planning and execution required to put on such a spectacle is unmatched by any other global sport. While the main attraction for racing fans is the cars and drivers battling on the tracks, the collective logistics that go into making each race happen are massive. So how exactly do they accomplish this though? Stay tuned as we find out. Now the logistics involved in moving the Formula 1 circus from one venue to another are akin to a military operation, both in terms of their complexity and precision. The movement of F1 cars, engines, parts, communication equipment, spares and personnel must be carried out with great care and caution to ensure that everything arrives at the next venue on time and in perfect condition. Any mistake or oversight could potentially cost a team a race or even their entire season. For instance, the Haas team missed the start of the initial round of testing in Bahrain last season because of technical difficulties involving their cargo plane. Therefore, the process of transporting F1 teams and their equipment is meticulously planned and executed, and it mostly involves various modes of transportation, including air, sea and road. With no single aspect left to chance, even the smallest detail, such as the timely delivery of cables or communication equipment, is essential for the smooth running of the operation. Since teams typically have only three days to transport their equipment to the next venue for back-to-back -back races and get it ready for the next race, which is a tight time frame, the movement of F1 equipment and personnel is highly choreographed and it's repeated for each event, ensuring that everything runs like clockwork. No doubt then, the costs associated with F1 logistics are substantial, and they continue to rise each year. In 2020, each team was estimated to have spent around $8 million on logistics alone, and take note that this figure was for a curtailed season, with fewer races due to the pandemic. In 2022, with an increased number of venues, the cost of transportation skyrocketed, and each team was expected to spend up to $10 million on logistics. This means that the total amount spent on logistics for all teams was close to a staggering $100 million. What plans are laid out for moving to the next location? Well, first off, the logistical planning for each race starts well before the event takes place. Then, a thorough review of the logistical plan is conducted on Thursday morning and it's approved by the team management. The dismantling and packing plan for the equipment is laid out in advance and each crew member plays a crucial role in executing the plan. The drivers and mechanics oversee the packing of the F1 cars and engines, ensuring that they're securely packed and transported to the next venue. In most cases, racing venues are cleared of all signs of the event within 10 hours of the Grand Prix. This rapid turnaround is made possible by the efficient and well-coordinated logistics operation that's in place. The dismantling, packing and transportation of the F1 cars and equipment are all carried out with great precision and care, ensuring that everything arrives at the next venue on time and in perfect condition. So how do F1 teams move between venues? Well, when it comes to moving equipment and personnel between venues, teams may utilize various modes of transport depending on the distance. An F1 team employs hundreds of personnel throughout a season, with a race team typically consisting of 50 to 75 or more personnel. Besides the race team, there may be media personnel and trainers that need to be on site, and when factoring in the factory teams that design and build the chassis, engines and other components, an F1 team can employ anywhere between 800 to 1000 people. Of all these employees, the race team is made up of the critical personnel that need to arrive at a venue in time. This team may include setup crews, mechanics, engineers, drivers, strategists, senior management teams, communication personnel, chefs, kitchen staff and others. Now all of the personnel have to be present throughout all race days, using different modes of transport and routes to get to the venue. In addition to the personnel, a significant amount of equipment also needs to be shifted from one venue to another. Therefore, the primary focus in logistics, as with any operation, is to reduce costs. However, ensuring efficiency remains a top priority regardless of any limitations or expenses. Generally, teams prefer road transport whenever feasible, while in cases where the distance between venues is significant, they may opt for air or sea transport instead. Moving via road Since most teams are based in Europe, they often choose to travel by road and make their own transportation arrangement. 
While road travel tends to be less expensive, it can be challenging to manage due to strict scheduling requirements. Severe weather and significant accidents can also disrupt the trucking schedule, which can be problematic since more than 300 truckloads of equipment are typically transported between venues. If these trucks were lined up end-to-end, -end, they would stretch for over 5 kilometers. However, for venues bordering Far East Europe such as Azerbaijan, road transportation is neither practical nor cost-effective. In these cases, teams typically opt for air travel instead. While the Formula 1 circus travels to every race, the motorhomes only go to European races where teams can conveniently drive the equipment, excluding places that are too far to drive to from Western Europe. And the motorhomes used in European races are truly remarkable structures, with some spanning over two to three stories high. They're equipped with everything needed to entertain guests, keep drivers and staff fed, and provide entertainment. Besides, they boast fully equipped kitchens and restaurants to cater to the needs of everyone present. Moving via sea and air Sea transportation is the most cost-effective and environmentally friendly way to transport equipment. However, cargo ships can take longer to cross seas and oceans. Therefore, sea transport is only used if the time between races allows for it. Delicate and critical equipment is usually transported by air or road to most venues. When it comes to intercontinental travel, sea or oceanic transport is often preferred. Now, the packaging of equipment is done at different times depending on when it will be needed during the race weekend. Non-critical equipment can be packed at the end of the first day of the racing weekend. Spare engines, gearboxes and power units are typically packed either on the morning of the race day or immediately following the qualifying rounds because it's not feasible to change these components during the race if they fail. The garage setup is usually one of the last items to be packed, but it must be among the first to arrive at the next venue to ensure everything is in place for the team to begin working. Either way, the FIA's official logistics partner, DHL, handles air and sea transportation for Formula 1 teams. Teams hand over their packed containers to DHL, trusting that they'll be delivered to the venue on time. DHL has been associated with F1 and FIA for many years and has never failed to deliver. Non-critical items such as tables, jacks and kitchen equipment are purchased in multiples and packed in sets in multiple containers for shipping or air freight. These containers may even be designated as one for each continent wherever it's convenient. The teams then prepare the containers and make them ready for transportation at the nearest designated location specified by the FIA and DHL. With padded interiors that keep the equipment safe and intact during travel, the containers are specially designed to fit perfectly in the cargo hold in designated locations. These containers are then loaded onto chartered planes which deliver the cargo safely to the airport closest to the venue before being transported via trucks to the venue. Now, each team transports 7 tons of equipment between venues, resulting in a total of 80 tons of equipment being moved between venues, including the material moved by the FIA. When transported by trucks, as many as 300 trucks may be needed, and according to DHL, Formula 1 teams ship 660 tons by air and 500 tons by sea per season. Then, about 6-7 to seven Boeings are chartered to transport Formula 1 cargo between distant venues. How about the main spectacle of the event, the cars? How are they transported? Well, Formula 1 cars are intricate and costly pieces of equipment that require careful handling, packaging and transportation. If there's enough time between two races, the cars will be flown back to the factory where their suspensions, engines, gearboxes and power packs will undergo thorough checks. The car's chassis will then be repainted before being shipped to the next venue. The modular structure of Formula 1 cars allows them to be assembled and dismantled easily part by part. The front and rear portions of the car are bolted together, while the nose of the car and the driver's cabin form one unit, and the engine, power unit and the rear portion form another. Moreover, in the event of a severe crash, the front and rear portions of the car are designed to separate, protecting the driver. This design also ensures the driver's safety in case the engine catches fire thus implying that the entire car can be dismantled and packaged within a few hours. As soon as the FIA officials finish checking the F1 cars for technical compliance, which usually takes around an hour after the checkered flag falls, the cars are immediately dismantled by the team mechanics. The rearview mirrors, suspension, engine, gearbox and power units are placed in foam boxes, while the front and rear wings are similarly packaged. 
Most times, the tools necessary for maintaining and repairing the car are often transported along with the car. The foam boxes are designed to maximize the use of space in the container and the car chassis is covered with a specially built protective cover. Furthermore, to help prevent sudden movement and vibrations from damaging the car components, the containers used for packaging the different parts of the car have cushion floors that help. In addition, the trucks used to transport these cushioned containers are also cushioned. Then, once the parts are packaged, the containers are ready to be shipped to another venue via road, air or sea, though most opt for road or air. While Formula 1 cars are undoubtedly a vital component of a Grand Prix event, they're not the only items that need to be transported. A plethora of personnel, spares, tools and equipment must also be shifted between venues. Any minor hitch in this transportation process can potentially disrupt the performance of the team, costing them precious points or even the entire race, ultimately impacting their season's outcome. For this reason, the shipping list and schedule are prepared weeks in advance and reviewed frequently. The review process takes into account any shortcomings or issues encountered during previous events and upgrades the list and schedules accordingly. Undoubtedly, this meticulous planning and attention to detail are critical for ensuring a smooth and successful Grand Prix event. We're then left with the organizers. How does the FIA converge to each race? The FIA is responsible for the smooth running of Formula 1 and has to transport its entire setup from one race to another. They use similar modes of transportation as most teams such as road, air and sea. Additionally, they even inspect circuits at the venues weeks or even months before the racing weekend to ensure their readiness. They also prepare a transportation schedule well in advance, which is reviewed periodically and modified according to any new development. The FIA has to transport various critical items, including Formula 1 and FIA senior management, safety cars and medical cars, safety car and medical car operators, Formula 1 media center, IT and media equipment, and personnel motor homes. Equipment and personnel for these venues are mostly transported by chartered and commercial planes, while motor homes are limited to some parts of Europe due to practicality reasons. Every alternate weekend, drivers, team personnel, media teams and equipment must converge by land, air and sea thousands of miles away at precisely the right time to make each race possible. And despite the scale of the logistical challenges, the Formula 1 teams execute their operations with pinpoint precision, making it one of the most impressive feats of meticulous planning and implementation in the sporting world. So, what part of their movements impresses you the most? Let us know in the comment section down below.